Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. I pray that you're enjoying the goodness and the bounty of the God of the Bible. I pray that you're enjoying, uh, uh, I don't know if it's uh, this way where you are, but here uh, we're expecting almost 80 degrees in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I'm enjoying every minute of it. I give God the praise for being so good and for being so kind. Now, listen, I have some concerns today, but I'm, but I'm excited about tonight and about what this weekend is going to be. Uh, we're in our uh, women. It's called our Women's Weekend. Women's Weekend 2023. Divine performance. October the 26th through the 29th. We have tremendous speakers. Yours truly, I will be speaking tonight. God's given me a message that I'm excited about preaching. And I believe, uh, women, that you're going to be blessed of the Lord and highly favored, and, and men as well. Uh, and then Friday night, uh, Prophetess Latara Tillman is going to be our speaker, and it's going to be a tremendous service. And Sunday morning for the 11 a.m. as well as the 8, or should I say the 8 a.m. as well as the 11, Prophetess Barbara Calloway will be our guest speaker. And so we're excited about Women's Weekend 2023 God bless uh, my wife and the Women's Weekend team. They've been working hard. I'm so proud of Pamela and just so proud of what God is doing with the women. On Saturday, they're going to have something here that's called the Exceptional Woman. They're going to, it's going to be amazing. She has tremendous women of God that's going to be featured. They're going to be presenters. First Lady Sheila McClurkin, First Lady Desiree Lyons, First Lady Nadine Stone, First Lady Tanja Leak, a district missionary, Ebony Coley, and the psalmist is the one and only Sister Amani Rayford. It's going to be mighty. And also, the uh, uh, prophetess Barbara Calloway will be a part of this uh, as well. So it's going to be a huge, huge women's weekend right here. And I'm excited about it. But let me tell you something. With all of the excitement, I'm also stunned. I'm shocked. I'm stupefied, if you will, I'm, I'm horrified at the inconsistency and the stupidity that I'm seeing taking place in America. Now, I want to read something to you right quick, my friends, and I'm, 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 I won't be long. A question was asked by the prophet Isaiah. The question was, and is in Isaiah chapter number one in verse 21. It said, how is the faithful city become a hollow? It was full of judgment, righteousness large in it, but now murderers. When Isaiah asked this question, Isaiah was talking about Jerusalem. As I read this question today, I am talking about America. What has happened to our country? Listen, we just had a vote in the House, a simple vote. House passes resolution condemning Hamas attacks on Israel. You know what happened by now. It's well documented on October the 7th, what Hamas did and how Hamas killed women, children, civilians, babies were beheaded. You, you've heard, you, 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 you know what I'm talking about. And uh, Hamas used, uh, Brother Gary, guns to kill these people. Guns. Guns. Knives, uh, uh, box cutters, to, to cut the screens and went in people's houses. And they used their guns to blow people away. To kill innocent Israeli civilians, men, women, and children. And military members lost their lives as well. They took military, they took civilians hostage. Both Israeli as well as American. So the House votes to condemn this attack. Would you please explain to me how nine Democrats voted against this? Thank God the resolution received overwhelming bipartisan support. 
It passed by 14 to 10. But my question is, what was the 10 thinking? Just nine Democrats voted against the measure. Rashida Tlaib, you knew that, from Michigan. Cory Bush, uh, Jamal Bowman, you know, the fire alarm guy. Uh, Andre Car Carlson, Al Green, not the singer. <laughs> AOC, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, uh, Summer Lee, Delia Ramirez, Iham Omar, uh, and uh, another half dozen Democrats, including caucus chair, Japalia, you know her, uh, she voted present. Present is basically a no vote. While Representative Thomas Massey, Republican from Kentucky, voted against the measure. Now, what's wrong with these people? What's wrong with our college students? The, the very people, the very people who condemn gun violence, we got to get rid of guns. These very people now justify gun violence. The same people who want to disarm law-abiding, innocent Americans are the same people now who have uh, taken the side of Hamas who has not only killed innocent Israeli civil civilians as well as uh, military, as well as uh, taking U.S. hostages and, and all these, all this. But, but these people targeted civilians. They are keeping civilian Palestinians from leaving the Gaza Strip. Many Palestinians are getting out, but they're, get, they're not getting out with the aid of Hamas. Hamas is saying to them, I want you to stay here and be our human shields. We need for more of you to get killed so we can take the pictures and give it to our, our allies in America and our allies around the world. What allies in America are you talking about? You know, the American press who refuses to report that the death of Palestinians, uh, the, the Palestinians that are being killed in Gaza, are being killed despite Israel's giving them time to leave. No one gave the innocent Israelis an opportunity to leave. No one gave the people who were partying through the night an opportunity to leave. I don't agree with partying through the, partying through the night, but I don't believe that you, you go kill people. No one gave them a chance to leave. They were targeted. Um, uh, and, and Hamas uh, are targeting these people Israel gave them a chance, but the American media will report it as though people are not concerned with the death of Palestinians. I'm sure you heard the Queen of Jordan upbraid America talking about uh, uh, Palestinian lives that are being killed and no, there's no alarm. Uh, and uh, but what she should, what she failed to add is that they're being killed because Hamas is hiding uh, behind them. In, in 2014, Hamas uh, actually, when they attacked Israel, had their headquarters and probably do now in the base of a hospital. But we're seeing half stories uh, uh, reported and, uh, and, and, and Israel, there's a growing hatred uh, in Israel. I just saw a story uh, by um, the Christian polls, the appalling silence of black churches during the Israel war. And uh, uh, I got in touch with the, the Christian polls. And because uh, uh, my, my position is this, uh, don't paint us with a broad brush. Some churches may be silent, Some, perhaps too many. And to be fair, uh, the, the article uh, does allow for the possibility and the probability that there are 
uh, African-American churches. It says, unfortunately, many African-American pastors and leaders have a mixed level of, of apathy and resistance toward Israel, as well as empathy, apathy, um, uh, Empathy for the Palestinian struggle, often making a comparison to the civil rights era. Now, look, we got to stop falling for that. I have something in my hand. Gary, I want you to let people see this. Uh, it says, and then this is this is this is supposed to be at a, uh, a Christian university. Uh, 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 liberate Palestine. Students demonstrate October the 18th, 730 at the. Um, uh, at the tribal courtyard. Listen to this. Global colonial violence is a threat to the safety of, listen to this, blacks, browns, native, and queer life rendered disposable by empire. From Cop City to Ferguson to Haiti to Gaza and to here in Winston-Salem, we must stand with the colonialized and oppressed unconditionally. Unconditionally. So when the colonialized and the oppressed cut off babies' heads, when they wake up grandmothers from their sleep and blow their faces off, when they tie their hands of innocent civilians who have not colonialized anyone and killed them simply because they're Jews, we must stand with them unconditionally. To group black and brown, native, and listen to this, queer life, to put us in this category, to me, it's still a disgrace. Now, my time is running out, but it's a disgrace. It's, it's all blacks, brown, native, uh, and anyone else ought to be insulted to be, in, uh, to be grouped with people who practice an ungodly lifestyle who basically became a minority group based on who to have sex with I guess based on how they mutilate their bodies. So we are now uh, grouped into this group of people and we're supposed to stand with the oppressed unconditionally. I guess we've forgotten the great Dr. Martin Luther King and his great uh, non-violence uh, uh, non crusade. What, what, whatever happened to that? Whatever happened to come let us reason together? No, there's a spirit of evil going through our nation. And I want to say to the black pastors out there, I want to say to the white pastors out there, because listen, listen, we can put this on the black church and far too many black pastors are either neutral or silent. But most of these universities that we're seeing on television, where all of this protest and all that's taking place, these aren't HBCUs. Harvard and Yale and all these schools, these are big white schools where these kids, pampered, spoiled kids who apparently have minds full of mush and are being taught nothing are out there marching for people who view us as the great Satan. And for these elected officials, you wouldn't vote to condemn uh, Hamas's actions even though Hamas is holding Americans hostage? There is something wrong with that. Now, I had to just get that off my chest. <laughs> I want to throw it out there. I want to make you think. I want to make you think. Uh, that hospital was Al Shifa Hospital, um, uh, where the Hamas uh, had their headquarters underneath the hospital. Isn't that something? So listen, listen, I want you to join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. God's going to bless us real good. The Lord has given me a message. The Lord has given me a message that I am going to preach and it's going to be a blessing to everyone. But women, woman of God, it's going to bless 
you real good and it will leave you fired up where you're ready to go forth and run through troops and leap over walls and let nothing stop you in your pursuit of Jesus Christ, this life and the things of God. Now I'm excited about it and I want you to join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for the first night of Women's Weekend. <laughs> And you know there's going to be some Bible studying going on. You know the Word of God is going to be featured. And uh, we're going to have a ball. And I want you to join me right here. Now, I love you. And I thank God for you. Someone said this. The teacher or the educator who make us think that we're thinking we love. But the ones who actually make us think. We don't like them very well. Well, that's this ministry. I make you think. I say things to you that sadly not enough are saying, and it causes you to have to at least consider what Brother Wooden is saying to you. I want you to think. Christianity is the ultimate thinking man's religion. And we're going to be here tonight hearing the word of God, open to the spirit with our thinking caps on. <laughs> now go on and make it a great day. I love you. God bless.